Hey everybody, welcome to another live edition of The Sewing Report. I'm your host Jennifer Moore and every week we help you discover your love of sewing. So thank you guys so much for joining me for yet another edition. And this week we are going to be talking about Hollywood fashion, which was a suggestion last week from Kirsten, so I thought that would be a lot of fun. Um, I don't know how you guys are doing this week. I'm doing great. Um, I actually did do a little bit of sewing yesterday and today, although my project's going a little off the rails. I'm making workout clothes, so look for that in a future edition of The Sewing Report. And I also, before we get started, I have a couple announcements uh, that I wanted to make. Oh, um, well, first of all, we are going to um, have a poll question. So every week I, I want to start introducing some like regular elements for this show. And what I want to do is do um, a poll question every week. So up in the cards, so if you click, if you're in the live show, so let me try to, all right, let me, let me tune in as well. So if you hit the little I in the top right hand corner, you'll see some things I've linked for this week. And every week I'm going to do a question. Um, so it's something, so it's like a poll question. So it's sort of, sort of a fun thing for us to all do together. And this week the question is, have you ever recreated a celebrity inspired outfit? Yes or no? So feel free to answer the poll question and uh, I'm curious to see if any of you have or not. I really haven't, um, but it's something I'm definitely interested in. And in this episode, I want to talk about, I'll talk about some of my favorite celebrity movie TV show inspired uh, characters. And I also want to hear from you as far as what you like, you know, what characters you like. I know I already got a comment that um, uh, somebody's watching the show The Crown on Netflix and really enjoying that. So there's a lot of TV shows and movies that we really get a lot of inspiration for or that we love the style. Um, popular one, Sex in the City, Mad Men, Game of Thrones. So there's a lot of, there's a lot to choose from and some of the costumes on these shows are incredible, which is why I thought it would be fun to talk about um, when, when Kirsten suggested this last week. All right, guys, I'm going to pop up the chat window so we can see, and I haven't even seen your comments either, so let me just sort of pop these out. All right, we got Barbara, uh, Deshinda, Vic is here again. Hello, everybody. We got Angel Lover, Ma uh, Max6629, hello. We have a guy in the sewing chat, Max, um, and I know, Max, you haven't really sewn before, but Max, if you're interested, let us know. And also what, um, Max, you're welcome to join that conversation as well as far as what kind of TV shows and movies you love the style on, if you're into celebrity style at all. We got Rebecca here. So thank you guys so much. And um, yeah, so I, and also um, in this episode, I found some really, so I was kind of trying to research a little bit about this topic. And I found a few books that are about Hollywood and celebrity style. So I've linked them below in the description box if you're in interested in checking them out. Um, particularly the second one I was very interested in. So the books are Fashion, The Definitive History of Costume and Style. And that it kind of follows the, uh, the history, history from, you know, from the earlier days to now. And also, um, the second book is one I'm really interested in. It's called Fictionally Fabulous, The Characters Who Created the Looks We Love. And the author is actually an illustrator. So what she did was she took um, quite a few different characters from movies and TV shows and created sort of a style profile for them, which I thought was really interesting. Um, so she illustrated the characters and then some of their more iconic outfits. And that book looks really cool, and that's definitely one I'm interested in checking out. The third one is called Hollywood Icons Photographs from the John Coble Foundation. And it just has some very classic Hollywood legends and some really great photographs of them. Um, but yeah, that second book, Fictionally Fabulous, I think is like it has some of the characters from Sex and the City. Um, you know, uh, I think also Cher from Clueless, and that's actually one of my personal favorites. Uh, so I also wanted to share some of my favorite style icons with you as well. Um, so yeah, so let's get into it. Um, and before we really get started, I do have a couple uh, PSAs that I wanted to uh, share with you. Um, if you are not aware, I have started doing more stuff on a non-sewing personal channel. Um, if, you, if you're interested in seeing what I'm doing when I'm not sewing, I'm going to be posting any 
video that does not have to do with sewing on there. The channel is called Jen Talks Forever and I've linked uh, the channel below in the description box and also in the cards um, if you click on that top right hand corner. Um, this week I posted a video about my very low maintenance nail care routine. So if you're interested in that sort of thing, feel free to head over there and subscribe if you if you like that sort of thing. Um, but that's something that, uh, you know, I'm, I'm going to try to get more into. I'm really trying to produce more videos. And some of the videos that I really want to produce don't have anything to do with sewing. So I thought that would be a good place to, to do it. Sometimes I just have random thoughts in my head that I just want to talk about or product reviews, or just kind of funny stories, or funnier videos. So I'm going to start doing more on that channel, so definitely check that out if you, uh, you like what I'm doing here and you want to see more. Um, you know, I've also got some videos I talk a lot, I, I'm really interested in personal finance as well, um, and if you want to support um, what I'm doing here at Sewing Report, I also have a little bit of a PSA. Um, I link a lot of products that I find on Amazon. I'm personally a really huge Amazon shopper. So if you um, would like to support this mission in any sort of way, it really helps me to create more content and be able to review products and that sort of thing. Um, if you click on any Amazon link and then purchase whatever you want, um, I get a little bit of a commission for that. So that kind of helps, you know, be able to to move this channel forward and grow what, what I'm doing here. So I really appreciate all your support and um, I'm really blown away by how many people are really liking this live show and it really means a lot to me. So thank you guys so much. Um, and we're about to hit 6,000 subscribers soon. So that is pretty cool and I never really thought that would happen. So uh, again, thank you. Thank you all for watching. Thank you for commenting and just all the... Uh, the uh, Community support is really great, and I think we're really um, making something really cool over here. Um, so I would like to keep doing this, um, but every, you know, and again, even if I link a product to anything and you're not interested in that, if you click on any one of the links and buy anything else, it um, that also helps. Um, again, that's something I don't really, I'm not at the point where I really want to do like a, hey, help me out and support a Patreon, uh, but this is a way that you can help support Sewing Report if you like it, uh, but it also doesn't cost anything extra if you're buying stuff you're already buying on Amazon. So thank you guys so much, and uh, let's get into the show. So I wanted to share some of my favorite uh, style inspiration. So the first time, I think, I, I'm not really, I don't consider myself a fashion plate by any means, um, but the first, I think, time that a movie or TV show really had like a fashion effect on me was 1995's movie Clueless, starring Alicia Silverstone, like Stacey Dash, um, Brittany Murphy, R.I.P. And that was the first movie where I was like, wow, I really like the clothes in the movie. Now, would I wear those clothes today? Probably not a lot of them, but I just really liked the bold fashion choices they made. Um, my best friend and I, Jill, we watched the movie, um, we had a sleepover one night, and we watched the movie five times in a row like just consecutively. And this was at the point where you had to rent movies. So we rented, oh, sorry. We rented the VHS from Blockbuster. Yes, I'm, I'm kind of old. And uh, we, you know, as soon as the movie was done, we would rewind it and start over. Um, yeah, that's, that's what we did. Um, and I later found out that um, apparently Jill's dad and brother rented the movie on their own and watched it while Jill and her mom were out of town, which or something like that, uh, which I thought was kind of hilarious that two guys decided on their own to, sorry, I have my nose is super runny today, that two guys decided on their own to rent the movie Clueless and watch it together. I don't think they, I don't think they enjoyed it very much though. Uh, but it's honestly one of my favorite movies of all time. And you'll notice kind of a theme in my own uh, preferences. Um, and I've also linked all of the, uh, I've, uh, you know, I've got some information about everything I'm talking about today. And uh, if you haven't seen these movies or TV shows, definitely check them out because they're some of my absolute these are like my all-time, all-time favorites. Um, so the second one, when I was, when I first started like working, I had just moved to a new city and I didn't really know anybody. So again, this story goes back to Blockbuster and um, I had rented, I started renting these, oh wait, so 
I was living in El Paso, Texas at the time, and I somehow one day the show Veronica Mars came on TV. Um, this was at the point where it was on like C UPN. Yeah, Veronica Mars was on UPN, and they UPN was like with CBS, so they aired a couple episodes on CBS, and I happened to catch one of the episodes, and I was like, "This is a really cool show." They had just started season two. Um, so I actually went back and rented season one, and I was quickly hooked. Um, if you don't, if you're not aware of this about me, I um, I was obsessed with the show Veronica Mars, starring Kristen Bell, and of course you know Kristen Bell from all sort of other stuff now. Um, but I was like a hundred and ten percent obsessed with Veronica Mars for about two years. I couldn't stop talking about the show. I think it really annoyed everybody. Uh, but I was like, absolutely, I was so into the show. I started buying DVDs for people as gifts. Like if there was a, like, I think I actually give, I actually, my friend Jill, I gave her the Veronica Mars DVDs as an engagement gift. Yes. Um, since then, I've learned that that might not be the most appropriate, um, appropriate gift. In fact, the, the wedding that I went to where I met my husband, I gifted the bride and groom the DVDs of Dexter, which is like super just not good. Um, and I think in hindsight, I realized that some of some of the gifts I've given people over the years, they're probably like, what the hell? What the hell? Like, I don't, I don't even know. So yeah, so I had gifted, I had, I probably have bought 10 copies of Veronica Mars DVD season one and given them away. Um, for a while, I think I caught like a really good sale on the DVD. So I bought like 10 sets and then I would just keep giving them out. And it was almost like I was a prophet or some sort of like missionary for Veronica Mars. It was that weird. Um, but I loved, I loved Veronica's wardrobe on the show. Like to, like to the nth degree, I would actually go to style blogs where people would break down her outfits and I would look to see like where she got her clothes from. And, um, oh, Kirsten's here. And Kirsten, thank you so much for the suggestion. We are doing your show suggestion this week. And Kirsten says she would have liked to get Dexter. So if you guys got DVDs as a wedding gift, what would you think? Um, yeah, I, I actually I actually did do that. Uh, Colette, I, and Colette has a question. What brought you to El Paso? Colette, I was um, working as a TV producer in El Paso. I had never been to El Paso before I accepted a job there, but I went there and I worked as a news producer at a station called KFOX uh, for about three years. So I was there. It was a really great place to live, actually. I um, didn't really know much about El Paso, like, at all. Um, but um, for people starting out in the TV news business, Texas tends to be a good place to start out because, like, there's stuff going on in Texas, so it's a good news market. Um, it's also very cheap to live in Texas. I actually really enjoyed living in Texas. And there's a lot of what we call starter markets. Um, so typically, your first job tends to be more at like a like a smaller city or an area that doesn't have as many people like you know not New York City but like you know like uh Grand Rapids whatever Grand Rapids Michigan or you know like somewhere kind of small and Texas had a lot of those places so at the time I was I thought Texas would be cool and it was it really was and um there were a lot of little TV stations, so I actually moved to Texas without a job, and for some reason I thought it was going to work out, and it actually did. So I ended up getting a job as a producer. Um, all right, we got a couple of questions. Okay, and Colette says, I was in the Army and retired here in El Paso. Wow! Okay, Colette, are, if you still live in El Paso, I lived there between uh, 2004 and 2007, so it was, it was a while ago. Uh, Max, would you make a Halloween costume by sewing it? Max, last year I did DIY a Halloween costume. I went as a uh, one of those like loofah sponges, you know, like the poopy ones. Um, it was a DIY. There wasn't really any sewing. I used safety pins to attach a bunch of tool to a t-shirt. Um, I would sew a Halloween costume. I don't have plans to do it this year, but it's only because, uh, one, I have nothing in mind, and two, um, 
uh, yeah, I I just haven't gotten on it this year. But I would definitely be interested in sewing a Halloween costume. I just don't really have like any Halloween costumes in mind, um, or anything that I'm like, yeah, that would be awesome. Uh, but a lot of people do make their own Halloween costumes, and there's a uh, Max. There's actually patterns for superhero stuff. So there's something called cosplay, so you know, which is like sewing like superhero stuff or and you know your favorite anime character, or whatever. And there are actually pattern companies that make cosplay patterns. And Joann's actually starts to sell, um, they have some cosplay fabrics. So if you're looking for like shiny lame or something that looks more like something out of a movie, um, you can actually go to Joann Fabrics, Max, if you're interested, and uh, look at to see what they have. And they also have patterns for men too. So they have patterns for guys so you can be like... Like, they're kind of generic, like they've got body suits, so you could be like Batman or Spider-Man, but you would just change up the fabric and, um, you know, you could kind of make it whatever they want. Um, so yeah, so I did live in El Paso, um, and at the time, yes, I was like completely obsessed with Veronica Mars, so I, um, so at the time, she, I think most of her costumes on the show, a lot of the stuff she had was from stores like Abercrombie and Fitch, American Eagle, and Old Navy. So whenever she would wear something new, I would actually try to get some of the items. And there's actually one item that I really wanted but was not able to find because it was already um, not being sold anymore. Um, but there was one, in one episode, Veronica wears this really awesome Abercrombie and Fitch um, pink and brown faux fur vest. I wanted that so bad. Um, and I actually did like Abercrombie at the time, but it wasn't being sold anymore. I did buy a couple items that Veronica had on the show from American Eagle and Old Navy. And actually, I just donated the jacket to Goodwill. You know, I didn't wear it that much, and I decided it was probably time to part ways. Um, but I was, like, uh, completely obsessed. All right, Kirsten says, I copied the Melanie Daniels dress from the birds, complete with blood spots and birds flying around me in 3D. That sounds amazing. And Max sees, so Kirsten did actually make her own costumes. All right, and Barbara says uh, to Max, check out McCall's patterns for cosplay at Joann's. So yeah, so so yes, if you have, there, if you haven't answered the poll question yet of the day, definitely do so. It's, have you ever recreated a celebrity uh, outfit? And that can include a character from a TV show, movie, or even just something that like somebody you liked wore. Uh, let me know if you have or not. And if so, what that was, like, uh, like Kirsten, she did her own thing. So, okay, so a couple more style icons I have. So the one more, of course, is Reese Witherspoon. I would actually say Reese Witherspoon probably has the style, the probably has the kind of style the most that I would emulate. Obviously, we don't really have the same look or body type, um, but I love pretty much everything Reese Witherspoon wears. Um, so she's definitely someone that I pay attention to and that I'm like, yes, I really love her dress. And I did go to her store, Draper James in Nashville. It, the style, like the stuff there is amazing. And I actually do like that Reese Witherspoon seems to be more aware of sustainable and ethical fashion. So if you're, if you've looked at Draper James before and you're like, wow, that stuff is kind of expensive. A lot of the stuff she makes is actually made in the United States, like her jeans and some other items. So I think it's really cool that Reese Witherspoon is, um, really willing to put her, you know, really willing to put stuff out there that may be a little pricier, but maybe might be better quality and is made in a better way. Um, so I think that's awesome. But, um, I think the two Reese Witherspoon movies that I love the most are Sweet Home Alabama. I thought um, her, you know, obviously she, since she was a fashion designer in the, in the movie, she's going to have killer style. And she did. That black turtleneck dress that she had on was one of my favorites. I just thought it was so classic and, you know, very like um, it was put together and it was very office like, but it was also very pretty. Um, I, I just loved all of her outfits in the movie that that outfit where she gets drunk in the bar and she's got the bow outfit. I thought that was really cute. Her wedding dress in the movie was amazing. Um, also, you know, if you're a lady, you know, I mean, Patrick Dempsey and Josh Lucas in the same movie and Ethan Embry. So they had a really good cast of characters. Um, I really enjoyed the movie. I watched it. I've watched it quite a few times and, um, uh, Definitely. And also her hair in the movie, I thought looked, you know, a lot of times Reese Witherspoon has long hair, but I really thought short hair really suited her in that movie. 
And you don't often see a lot of female leads, female leads with short hair like that. So that was definitely another one of my favorite, uh, favorite movies for, for the style. Uh, the other Reese Witherspoon movie is, of course, Legally Blonde. Um, Elle Woods, Pink, everything about that was just amazing. So that was another movie where I just really appreciated all of her style choices. Obviously, some of the stuff on the show was can be a little out there, um, you know, like her pink suits and all the other stuff. But, um, you know, she just rocks it. Reese Witherspoon is hands down one of my favorite actresses. And I think her, st- her level of style is um, probably closest to what I would want mine to be like. Um, even though I'm not a Hollywood actress. All right, we've got a, a Kara. I love the style on Mad Men and will definitely be making a flare dress. Betty and Trudy always looked flawed. You know what, Kara? Those were actually my favorite characters for clothes as well. I thought Betty, um, I thought Betty was, her style was just impeccable. She looked amazing all the time. I think January Jones is gorgeous. And I just really, really liked Betty Draper's style on the show. Um, and yeah, I would say Trudy, um, Allison, played by Allison Brie, was also another good example of someone that always looked really fabulous on the show. I know a lot of people like Joan, uh, played by Christina Hendricks. I appreciated her style on the show, but it wasn't, I don't know, I personally gravitated more towards Betty Draper than Joan or Peggy or those other characters. Um, yes. Oh, okay, wait, Christina Hendricks from Mad Men Sews? Get out. Okay. That is interesting. Okay, we've got kittenish behavior here. I love Miss Fisher's uh, murder mysteries for the fashion as well as the stories. I don't think it would suit my shape, but it gives me ideas to work with, and I love Mad Men too. Yes, I know everybody loves Mad Men, and I've noticed um, there seems to be a really big trend now towards 50s and 60s style. Um, Some of it I like, some of it is not personally for me, but I really appreciate that. I really appreciate that people are really getting back to vintage styles. I would say if I had to go with the time period of fashions I liked, um, I did appreciate all the outfits on on uh, Downton Abbey as far as that like, you know, 1920s, 19-teens style. I thought the outfits, I particularly liked, uh, oh, and that's apparently in that book, Fictionally Fabulous, Mary Crawley is one of the uh, people they profile in the book. That book looks really good and I'm actually kind of interested in picking that up. All right, Jason, I get most of my fashion ideas from Legally Blonde, too. All right. And Jason, I have to ask, have you seen Legally Blonde? And if so, what was your favorite outfit of Elle Woods? I want to know. I want to know. Jason's joining us from Pink Castle Fabrics. And uh, Jason also revealed, I guess he's working at the shop usually on Sundays. So that's why he's been joining us. Um, If you are in the Ann Arbor, Michigan area, definitely check out Pink Castle Fabrics for your Janome sewing machine and fabric needs. They're awesome. All right, we've got JB Downton Abbey and Titanic has my heart when it comes to period. You know what? She did have a lot of really cool dresses on the Titanic movie, although to still to this day, don't you kind of wonder why two of them couldn't fit on that door on the ocean? Just saying. But, all right, Kirsten, great outfits in the classic 40s through 60s movies like Gentlemen Prefer Blondes. Oh, that's a good one. All right, and Jason has not seen... All right, Jason, you and Brenda need to rent Legally Blonde and Legally Blonde 2 and check that out. I think you need to do that. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Maybe have a movie night and rent some chick flicks. Um, So, yeah. Um, Yes, Reese Witherspoon... She she is definitely, and everything I see Reese Witherspoon wear, I want. Like, that's how I know she's your style icon, is if every single thing she's wearing, you're like, I need that, I need that, I need that. Um, okay, and my last style inspiration, I've got a couple honorable mentions that I just thought of as well. My last one is... She has style somewhat like Reese Witherspoon's. Uh, Kristen Davis, who played Charlotte York on Sex and the City. Um, Sex and the City is not my favorite show. In fact, there's a lot of things about it that kind of annoyed me. But uh, but I loved, I just loved everything. And Kristen Davis, uh, you know, she, and I saw, looked up her age. She's like 52 or 50 or something. And I'm like, you do not look 50 at all. So, 
But Charlotte York's style on Sex and the City, I thought, was very like preppy, ladylike, polished, and that's sort of in classic. And that's what I, and I loved her decorating style. I loved how when she renovated the apartment, um, I just love everything Charlotte had. I just thought Charlotte's style on the show was amazing. Uh, so she's another one of my, my favorites. Also, I, I thought out of all four of the characters, in my opinion, I thought she was the least annoying. Um, some of the others, like, I don't know, like, I, I was never really that big on Carrie or Samantha or, or Cynthia Nixon's character. Um, uh, oh, what was her name on the, why can't I remember? Wait. Miranda, Miranda, Miranda the lawyer. Um, I just found the, the the other three were kind of, but Charlotte was just sort of like fun loving and like a little more easygoing. So I think that's why I liked her personality better. All right, we got Kirsten and Jennifer Lopez's red tango dress from the Wedding Planner. You know what? I uh, it's been a while since I've seen the Wedding Planner. Yes, I would agree with you. I thought Jennifer Lopez in the Wedding Planner, um, she just had a very nice. You know, just, I, and again, I like women that rock a lot of things you could wear to the office. And I thought a lot of her clothes on that movie were, were great for a work, you know, if you're going to work. Uh, Jason Brenda says she's seen most of them. I have those seem clueless. It actually holds up well for obvious reasons. <laughs> That's awesome. And I want to know, so, um, so let me know if you have a favorite TV show or movie that you like the style on let me know what you think it is and also make sure to take the poll question have you ever recreated a celebrity outfit before yes or no all right so yeah so charlotte york sex in the city i know um charlotte i guess wore a lot of uh uh tracy reese outfits on the show she, i mean she is ralph lauren um you know and i actually really like ralph lauren as well so and i loved charlotte's preppier outfits like when she would wear like little polo shirts or um you know, just real cute st I just loved, it, you know, and in that last episode, I think when they, like, find out they're getting a baby, she's wearing this really awesome, um, Ralph Lauren, like, pink polo, like, it was a black, like, shirt or something, but it had, like, the pink pony on it. I love all of the Ralph Lauren stuff with pink ponies on it. Um, I just, I don't know why, but that's definitely one of my favorite, um, items. And in fact, after the show ended, I was, like, looking up her outfits, um, so if you find yourself Googling the outfits, that's probably a sign that that show is something that you really like the style on. Um, as far as more recent shows, I'm trying to think of some, um, you know, I did always like, um, Yvonne Strahovski on the show Chuck. I always liked her. I thought she had a really good sense of style. Um, there's another one. Oh, I was thinking of, um. Yeah, Jennifer Lopez, I thought in The Wedding Planner. Uh, Kirsten, I'm I'm with you. I think she looked amazing. Um, there's another one, too. Uh, oh, uh, Sandra Bullock and Miss Congeniality. I think post-makeover, I really liked... Um, I really liked the wardrobe on, on in that movie that they gave Sandra Bullock. I think Sandra Bullock's a great actress. Um, so she's someone that I like her movie style quite a bit. Um, but Miss Congeniality, I thought that's one of my favorite movies. And uh, that's definitely a movie where I liked the main character style quite a bit. So yeah, I mean, I don't, I don't know. I'm so, and I apologize. I'm probably going to keep the show a little bit short because I, I have a lot of things I have to do after this. Okay, Angel Lover says, has anyone watched If the Shoe Fits? Well, I'm not familiar with that one. Uh, let me look that up real quick. If the Shoe Let's see here. If the shoe fits. I'm not familiar. Let's see here. Is that a... Is that a TV show? Okay. Is that is that a Cinderella story? Or is it another... Okay. I googled it. Oh, wait. Here we go. There's a 1990 movie. Okay. is Are you talking about this 1990 movie with uh, Rob Lowe and Jennifer Grey? Is that it? That's pretty cool. Okay, it's, all right, according to IMDb, v, IMDb, it's a modern Cinderella in Paris while the plain Kelly Carter jobs as a gadrobier for the famous fashion designer Franci Francesco. She dreams of designing shoes for him. However, she can't win his attention until she meets a good fairy on the street who enchants a pair of Kelly shoes so that she turns into supermodel prudence whenever she wears them. She attends one of Francesco's balls and immediately wins his heart. 
no can she make how can she make him love her former self that sounds like a movie i would definitely watch i've seen all those real like i've seen a lot of really hokey 80s movies and i love them all so that definitely sounds like something i would i would totally do if that is that the one you are referring to if so that sounds that sounds really cool all right um Kirsten, I came up in the 70s, so Jennifer Lawrence in American Hustle made my head explode in a good way. I haven't seen American Hustle yet. I'm interested. Um, hopefully it's on like HBO Go or something because that would be great. All right, JB says, I Marie Antoinette was eye candy for sure and Memoirs of a Gay Show has extremely beautiful costumes. I would agree with you. And JB, are you talking about the Marie Antoinette with... Are you talking about the new one with, like, Kirsten Dunst? Or is there another version of that, too? Um, kittenish, beha kittenish behavior... Kit I cannot talk today. Kittenish behavior loves Gossip Girl's Ser Serena. You know, I would agree with you. I thought Serena on the show had really great... Um, great outfits, great costuming for her. And I like Blake Lively's just everyday style. Plus, she's married to Ryan Reynolds, so... um. Yeah, we, I officially hate her. I'm just, just teasing, just teasing. But, um, you know, she, I mean, talk about having your life together. I mean, really, you look awesome. You know, you're in all these movies. You have, you have really great hair and you're married to Ryan Reynolds. Can life get any better? I don't know if it can. Uh, got Love, Sandra Bullock too. Looked amazing in the movie. Jay's B says the Kirsten Dunst version. I haven't seen, there's so many movies I haven't seen. I need to go back and watch some older movies. There's a lot of movies that I just kind of miss the boat on, I guess. I don't know. But, uh, yeah, I don't know. So, and also, I want to know, so we've mentioned a lot of movies and stuff. Are there TV shows that you really like the character's style on? Um, besides, I mean, obviously, the one, the uh, super obvious one is usually Sex and the City. Um, oh, The Women, the one from the 40s, says Linda. I've only seen the newer version of The Women, um, and I really enjoyed the movie. Um, I need to check out the one from the 40s. Oh, and I also wanted to share um, kittenish behavior. I, I think style-wise, let's not forget Blair. What was it? Blair. Um, why can't I say her name? Blair Waldorf. Was that her name? Blair Waldorf played by Late Meester. Uh, I thought she, I thought her. a lot of her outfits on the show were super cute too. Um, so she's another one that, like, I think Serena and Blair, awesome fashion. Um, so yeah, I would agree. Gossip Girl definitely has a great uh great definitely great i mean and, and we really gotta give it, we really gotta give it up for the costume designers and the wardrobe people because they're the ones that make it all happen so uh yeah so and anyways another thing i wanted to ask is uh, what are you guys sewing right now are you did you get to do some sewing this weekend i got a little bit done but i need to go back and kind of fix some things um for my workout gear but I'm I'm excited to actually get some sewing done because I haven't gotten to in a few weeks. Uh, kittenish behavior. Blair was also awesome, but a little too polished for me. You know what? I think a good mix would be Blair and Serena. Like, they both had really great clothes. Yeah, Serena was a little more... Um, I think Serena was a little more daring with her fashion choices. Blair was definitely very, like... Um, I and mean, just very put together. Um, okay, HBO's Insecure has some great outfits. I have not checked that out yet. I've seen some promos for it, though, and of course, a lot of people like the costumes on Game of Thrones, like Max. Although, then you kind of wonder, like, how practical is that for everyday life? Um, I do want to know, if there was a TV character that just wore, like, workout gear and yoga pants all the time, I think we could really relate to that character. JB Ultimate Fashion History channel on YouTube has videos on fave fashion film. Very interesting. That's a good suggestion. Um, but yeah, TV shows, movies, we can get a lot of inspiration. I mean, this is a non-TV. Um, I mean, I guess she is on TV, but obviously a lot of people like Kate Middleton. Uh, style, I think she is another one where I just love everything she wears. Um, in her, And I also like how she kind of mixes. She does like high-low mixing. All right, uh, Cheryl Thomas, uh, Scandal is a TV show, but Carrie Washington stays with her Olivia Pope wardrobe. I have not really watched Scandal, but I love Carrie Washington. I think she is an amazing actress. Um, and yeah, her clothes, some of her wardrobes on the show is just, it's just great. And I used, years ago, I don't get this magazine anymore, but I used to buy In Style Magazine. 
And I always liked how In Style would break down various celebrities and TV characters and movie characters' wardrobes. Um, so I thought that was really, I really, you know, I, I maybe I should go back to In Style magazine because I just really liked a lot of the things they did with it. Kirsten, I did make a version of a specific dress from a movie just this summer, Marilyn Monroe's pink dress from Bust Up. I have not seen Bust Up, but your clothes sound really awesome, Kirsten. Um, so kudos to you for actually turning some of these things into a reality. Linda just finished a baby doll outfit, overalls, and a t-shirt. Also a blanket and pillow. My mother-in-law's roommate friend found a doll who had no clothes. Oh, that's so sweet. Aw. And Kittenish Behavior says, love the Maryland dress. Okay, so you've seen the Maryland dress. Um, Kirsten, definitely tag me on Instagram. I'd be interested to see some of your outfits. And also, I do think, Kirsten, you need to make some Jay Lawrence uh, 70s outfits. I think that'd be pretty cool. I think you should go for that. Kara, I've cut out the pieces for a simple top, but I'm too cozy in bed to sew it now. That's a job for tomorrow. It's always for tomorrow. Let's let's be honest here. Um so yeah, and this is, uh, I didn't really do my hair today, but I think you guys are okay with that. So, um, you know, I had to do some other, I was trying to do a little sewing before the show and also eat something. Um, and I have to do some cleaning today. So that's what's on my agenda. Um, but yeah, this has been awesome. And if you guys have any suggestions for what we should talk about next week, um, let me know because I'd be interested. Um, I was, I was kind of, so here's what I was thinking about talking about next week. Um. This has come up more recently, and this is a topic I've talked about quite a few times before, but um, I want to talk about how to attract other, how to attract more young people into sewing. Um, we can't really beat around the bush. This is like the elephant in the room. There's not a lot of young people who sew out there. There just isn't. Um, so I was thinking about maybe how, maybe next week we could talk about, um, Maybe ways we might be able to entice more people into so. I mean, we need more people generally. Um, there's so many patterns and up uh, like just endless amounts of fabric that we can buy. Um, but I think if the industry, the sewing industry, really wants to thrive and continue to grow, um, we need more people to sew. And you know, if you're under the age of like 40, you know that when you talk to people just in your everyday life. You don't find a lot of people who sew other than you. Um, and when I've gone to sewing and quilting events, there are some young people there, but there is not a lot. Like, I would the, I would say the demographics still very much skew towards um, towards older folks. And they're, that's awesome because, you know, there's so much we can learn from people with sewing experience. But at the same time, um, that's not something we should ignore. We do, we, at some point, you know, the sewing industry may come to a crossroads and we're going to need more people just doing it in general to sell sewing machines, fabric, and to keep this industry alive. Um, Kara, do I count as young? I'm 23. Yes, you definitely count as young. That's awesome. I've been sewing, knitting and sewing since I was about 19. And Kara, I have a question for you. Um, obviously since you're, you're much younger than me even, um, how many of your friends sew quilt or knit? Are are you like very much a minority or are there other people out there that do it? There do seem to be some things that are coming back like knitting, but um, buying a sewing machine definitely seems to be um, a bit of a barrier for a lot of people and I, I want to talk about that. Um, Cheryl just found your channel a few weeks ago. Have you ever done a sew along? Cheryl, I do have a few videos where I do some more step-by-step -step type things. Um, it, I have them all in a playlist called Sewing Report How-Tos. Uh, so you're definitely welcome to check that out. Um, but yeah, I thought maybe next week we could talk about what, um, just our thoughts about the the trends we're seeing in the sewing industry, um, the lack of young people in this space, and also how we might be able to change that. Um, I think it's a very important topic to touch on. And it's something that I do, obviously we haven't figured it out yet because there aren't a ton of people sewing that are maybe under 30 um, or 35 or 40 even. So I think that's something we, you know, maybe we could try to um, over time, and this is not an overnight thing for sure, but in the long term, we need to figure this out. Um, 
So, and the reason I was inspired to do it was I saw an interview with that Jennifer Lopez did. Yes, one of my favorites, Jennifer Lopez. She did a couple interviews where she, and I shared this on my Facebook page. So if you don't follow Sewing Report on Facebook, uh, definitely hit, hit me up there because throughout the week I share things I find on the, random things I find related to sewing on the internet. But Jennifer Lopez has a nine-year-old daughter who's obsessed, quote-unquote, obsessed with sewing. So it was very exciting for me to see, but also I was like, how do we get more nine-year-olds into sewing? How do we get more 20-year-olds into sewing? How do we get more 30-year-olds into sewing? Um, because out of every single person I know that's, you know, I mean, obviously I interact with a lot of people who sew just in social media circles. Uh, but as far as how many people I know who sew in like my everyday life, I maybe know two um, that are under the age of 40. Like may maybe two. That's it. Um, so I think that's something, if you guys are up for that, I think that's something we could talk about next week. All right. Um, Angel Lover, is it more expensive to sew than buy? Angel Lover, it depends on what you're making. Um, yeah, I would say sewing is not cheaper. Sewing clothes is not cheaper than going to H&M or Target or Forever 21 and buying fast fashion. But the benefit of sewing is that you can make your own like custom, more couture type pieces and it's going to save you a lot of money. Um, obviously, then if you're like, if you try to make your own Chanel style jacket, it might cost you a couple hundred dollars in materials, nice materials. But if you tried to buy that jacket, it would be several thousand dollars. Uh, so my answer is that sewing is sometimes cheaper than buying, but quite often it's not. We sew because one, we love it. And two, because we want better, we want better quality things. Um, a lot of the, once I started sewing, you start noticing the fabric quality of stuff and you're like, oh my gosh, that's like icky. Um, so sometimes it can be cheaper and also, um, it depends on where you, you know, obviously where you source your materials from. If you're repurposing something or if you're using, you know, maybe upcycled fabric you found at a thrift store, it can be cheaper. There are definitely ways to make it less expensive. Um, so I would say sewing can be cheap or expensive depending on what you want to do and also how you source the stuff you're buying. Um, JB, unfortunately, when they take home ec, family, and consumer science out of schools, then less people are exposed to sewing. It's becoming a lost art in a sense. And I would agree with you, JB. And that's why I think it's very important that it doesn't become a lost art. How can we make sure it doesn't become like a thing people used to do, like listening to records on a record player? Um, you know, this is something I think sewing is a very valuable and a uh, very meaningful thing to do. So that's why I do this, is to try to uh, share that with everybody. All right, uh, we've got Jason. I'm 35, and we never took home ec in school, although we did base learn basic mending in Boy Scouts, which seemed really silly at the time, but I'm glad they went over it. Kara, my friends in real life don't craft, but all my online friends make things. And that's what I've noticed, too, is that, like, your friend, like, the people you know, like, and see, actually see your family members, your friends, they don't, but then you can come here like on YouTube or Instagram and Facebook and find all these other people. So at least we've got that. But, um, you know, I would definitely say sewing is not something that's like a huge trend among young people. Um, I would, I would go out on a limb and say that because you just still don't see, you see some people that are doing DIY stuff now, um, or like people that are taking t-shirts and like gluing stuff together, but um, let's be honest, that's, that's more DIY and there's a big difference between doing DIY projects and, and like real legit sewing. And I would like to see more people under the age of 40 getting to more legitimate forms of sewing. Um, and that's the thing about the internet is there, there's so many ways to teach yourself. Um, most of my sewing skills are, are basically learned from online resources, craftsy, YouTube videos, blogs. Um, I've taken maybe a couple sewing type workshops or classes and that's it. Um, which is kind of nice because you can do things in the comfort of your own home. Um, but the downside to that is that you might not be physically interacting with as many people. Um, Barbara, in my workplace, there are just two of us who sew. I do garment sewing and the other lady quilts. We are both quote unquote older. And Barbara, yeah, like, I'm not sure how to say that. Like, um, I don't want to offend anyone because that's not, you know, I don't want to, categorize someone by age but I would say um the people who a lot of the people I meet that quilt and sew tend to be retired you know someone that has a little more leisure time maybe um but I don't meet a lot of especially with me like I'm not like 
or if they are younger, a lot of them tend to be like um, young moms, like stay at home mothers. And again, they're like, you know, I learned to sew because I was looking for something to do while my child was asleep or something, which is awesome too. But I even find for me, there was not a lot of young professionals who are into sewing, um, like people that don't have kids or people that like, you know, work in an office. There's definitely very few people who sew in those circles. Um, I think it's because more of a, can, you know, obviously maybe a time thing. They don't have as much time. And also they, you know, when they are off the clock, they tend to drink wine and like watch TV or something. Um, you know, and they're, they're not that, I haven't met that many people into making things that are in professional circles. Um, so that's another thing that I think we, we need to figure out. Um, but yeah, anyways, that's something I definitely want to talk about next week. Um, I know, and, and this is obviously a good topic because people are really starting to chime in right now. Uh, Barbara, in my workplace, okay, oh, we got, how do we get anyone into sewing? I don't know anyone. Sewing clothes is getting things the way you want it. That's very true. Kirsten might not be cheaper, but so much more satisfying. Anyways, obviously, clearly judging by the comments, this is a topic that's um, that would be a good one to discuss. Um, so I'm probably going to sign off pretty soon. But next week, we are going to get a lot more into... Um, and I've written a couple, if you're interested, I'll in next week's show, I'm going to link a couple of like, just thoughts, random thoughts I wrote about... Um, particularly the millennial group and sewing. Um, but all right. And Kara, bedding sets from the charity shop. Great way to get fabric on the cheap. Um, so yeah, lots of great comments. And um, I, I just think this is something we need to really try to figure out as a community is also how to make these people feel welcome, how to make, you know, how to make it, and also how to make it easier for people to get into sewing. Um, beside, because it, let's be honest, a lot of people, if it requires them leaving the house, they're just not going to do it. Like I'm myself included. Um, so anyways, next week, okay, clearly judging by all the very impassioned comments, this is the topic for next week. So that is definitely where, so get your thoughts ready, get your questions ready and your experiences and stories ready. And next week we are going to tackle the topic of, um, you know, basically sewing, where's all the young people? Um, and if you have any suggestions or, or if you're a business owner and you found things that have worked for you to marketing, I also definitely think the marketing for sewing needs to target a few different groups. Um, I've also talked to a lot of men who are interested in sewing, but kind of feel like it's, you know, they're a little scared off by all the like feminine, you know, all the fem, you know, just like the feminine look of sewing. So that's something I think uh, definitely next week we're going to touch on. But thank you guys so much for uh, tuning in. And uh, yeah, definitely keep coming back. If you like sewing, if you are interested in learning about sewing, feel free to subscribe to The Sewing Report. Um, I do a weekly video and then a live show every Sunday. And I really appreciate everyone's support. This is this These shows have been so much fun for me. And um, hopefully I will get to do more of this. Um, but I will see everybody next week um, when we are definitely going, clearly we're going to be talking about um, how to attract younger audiences to sewing. So guys, you guys have a great week and keep on sewing and I will see you all next Sunday for another show. All right, sorry, I gotta, sometimes this OBS software can be like very tricky. All right, guys, I'll see you next week.